From Daily Trust News Center, this is News Hour. On News Hour tonight, Governor Wike denies suit against Atiku, PDP, and others. National Crisis Management Doctrine has been launched as response to rising security threat. Youths demand political inclusion as Youth Day is marked. On the foreign scene, Germany suspends military operations in Mali over diplomatic tension. Hello and welcome to the News Hour. I am Tiro Nifade. River State Governor Nyesom Wike has denied instituting a legal suit seeking to remove Atiku Abubakar as a presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the 2023 general elections. Reports emerged on Friday that Wiki and another party chieftain, Nugent Ekamon, had asked Abuja Federal High Court to order his declaration as the presidential candidate of the PDP. PDP presidential primary produced Atiku Abubakar as the presidential candidate with 371 votes, as against Wiki, who came second with 270 votes. Abubakar knocked Wiki to pick Delta State Governor Ifan Yokoa as his running mate. In the suit marked FHC ABJ CS 732 2022, Wiki and a PDP chieftain Nugent Ekamon are listed as the plaintiffs. The PDP is listed as the first respondent, while the Independent National Electoral Commission is the second respondent. Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambuwal and Atiku are listed as the third and fourth respondents. Wiki, however, disowned the suit, describing it as the handiwork of mischief makers who wanted to use him to score cheap political goals. The governor said the lawyers who filed the suit are unknown to him and he queried filing a suit 14 days after the primary. Before I go into that, let me say, and to let Nigerians know, that people have called me throughout this morning, all kinds of things, that I, I went to court against Atiku Abubakar. I want to say categorically, if I had reason to go to court, I would go to court. But I didn't go to court. I just have to say it for Nigerians to know I have kept quiet and busy delivering dividends of democracy. For my party to win election in River State, people are busy plotting how they win election. Rather, our people are busy trying to see how they will lose election. If they lose election, nobody should call my name. I have told the candidates, you will lose this election, you will win this election, because of people around you. Anybody who knows me is not too well. If I was going to court, I would have gone to court within two weeks after the primaries because it is a pre-election matter. And after two weeks, he can't go to court. The legal advisor of the party called me and I told me he knows that there's a mischief going on, that he knows me very well if I'm going to court, it's not those kind of lawyers I would have used. And I don't even know the lawyers. But I want to tell the candidate, it is the candidate group that are doing all these things. Let the word hear. They are the ones plotting all these things, thinking that they will spoil my name. You cannot. Yesterday they said, I remove all PDP. Uh, flags in River State Government House. We are supposed to be talking about how you win an election. It's not about this 
rent seekers, around people. They are not doing him any favor. Rather, they are, they are trying to make him not to win election. But if that's what they wish, I wish them good luck. River State Governor Yeson Wike. Elder statesman and Ijo leader Edwin Clark says inclusivity in the Nigerian political setting is destroyed with APC's Muslim Muslim ticket. Speaking on Trust TV's program Reminiscences, the former federal commissioner said he shared his thoughts with Senator Kashim Setima when he visited him in Abuja recently. You cannot run a government that is not balanced. The Christians, if you take their census, it, is, it may be even be difficult to know the population of the Muslim and the population of the Christians. You will now add middle belt. So, therefore, you cannot ignore one of saying that you will have a Muslim Muslim. So we argued, I said, you spent one billion naira on rebuilding churches. And that money belonged to the people of Bono State. So if you have no regard for church, for the Christianity, why did you waste the money? The full program will be broadcast on Saturday at 7 p.m. on Trust TV. President Muhammadu Buhari has launched the National Crisis Management Doctrine, NCMD, which was developed to bridge the gap created by extensive deployment of security services through fostering collaboration among the ministries, departments, and agencies, MDAs. Speaking at the launch at the State House Abuja on Friday, the president described the feat as a significant milestone in recognition of the need for collective efforts towards achieving coordinated, effective, and efficient national crisis management. Kendi Amodu reports. National crisis management doctrine, which was developed by the Office of the National Security Advisor, is expected to ensure greater successes in tackling national crises. The governments of Britain and the United States collaborated in the development of the doctrine, which provides a detailed methodology for national crisis response. President Buhari says the explosion of insecurity across Nigeria in the past seven years has stretched the deployment of resources and the national security apparatus, which is why this doctrine is necessary. Nigeria was faced with multiple security challenges ranging from terrorism, kidnapping, armed banditry, ethnic militia attacks, oil theft, rape, gun running, and various acts emanating from violent extremism. The emergence of the Boko Haram terrorists group, as well as bandits and kidnappers, in Nigeria considerably changed the country's security situation, even panic in the minds of the populace. The president says the document demonstrates the renewed promise and commitment of this administration to manage crisis in the country. I am delighted to state that this is a significant, significant milestone in recognition of the need for our collective efforts towards achieving coordinated, effective, and efficient national crisis management. National Security Advisor Babagana Mongunu is confident that with the general principles set out within it, the document will provide the necessary response to malicious threats and civil emergencies. These work streams are aimed at building resilience to mitigate the impact of terrorist attacks and to develop a framework for the mobilization and coordinated cross-governmental efforts. Accordingly, the purpose of the National Crisis Management Doctrine is to provide the framework for multi-agency response to national crises 
while fostering collaboration and interoperability. Owing to the dynamics of insecurity, the Office of the National Security Advisor revised the National Counterterrorism Strategy through the National Crisis Management Doctrine. It also upgraded work streams from five, namely forestall, secure, identify, prepare, and implement, to two components, prepare and implement. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. In other news, two vigilante members have been shot dead during a crossfire with bandits as Gasapa community in Gawu Ward, Abaji Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. A member of the vigilantes said the incident happened around 4.30 p.m. on Thursday at a forest bordering the Federal Capital Territory and Niger State. He said the vigilantes had mobilized to the forest to rescue a farmer who was abducted on the farm. He said the gunmen laid an ambush as the vigilantes were approaching their hideout where two members of the vigilantes were killed during exchange of fire with the bandits. He said four other vigilantes who sustained bullet wounds were receiving treatment at a private hospital in Lambata, Niger State. The FCT Police Command is yet to confirm the incident. Kaduna State Governorship candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Suleiman Hunkui, said neglecting community policing and non-involvement of traditional rulers in the security architecture contribute to the deterioration of security in Kaduna State and Nigeria. At a press briefing in Kaduna, Hunkui said the Muslim Muslim ticket of the ruling party in Kaduna State and at the national level will not work. The report. Senator Sleiman Hunkui was an ally of Governor Nasri Erifai before his defection to NNPP. He said insecurity is allowed to fester because of neglect of community policing. He said failure by the relevant authorities to involve traditional rulers in matters of security in Kaduna State also contributed to worsening the situation. The issue of security is community-based. Part of what caused the problem, and is still causing the problem, is you remove community leadership. How many village heads were hitherto by this government removed from office? How many district heads were removed from office? They have a contribution to make. Problem of our youth, lack of engagement. Part of the security apparatus in community policy must recognize the abundance of this youth. Senator Hongui also said APC Muslim Muslim ticket is dead on arrival. You cannot finish raking the economy of a nation the way APC does and today come with the issue of religious. It won't work. It can't work. It's not correct. It won't sail through. Senator Hunke further appealed to the people of Kaduna State to remain law-abiding and avoid violence in the build-up to the elections. Bella Musa, Trust TV News, Kaduna. So, crime now. Cannabis sativa worth 30 million naira has been intercepted by the Nasarawa State Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. Commander of the agency, Odaudu Oche, made this known in Lafia while parading one of the suspects intercepted with the illicit drug. The report. Addressing journalists on the recent achievements by the command, Nasarawa State Commander of National Drugs and Law Enforcement Agency, Eduardo Oche, said, Officers and men of the agency succeeded in arresting a 45-year-old man, Mohammed Adamu, while on patrol in Akonga, local government area of the state, with vehicle loaded with cannabis sativa. 
at about 10 24 hours, officers and men of Akwanga Area Command intercepted a white J5 Boxer vehicle with registration number KTG 71XC. The vehicle, which had originated its journey from Ogere, Ogun State, was headed for Bauchi in Bauchi State. Recovered from the vehicle were 1,556 compressed laptop-like parcels of cannabis sativa, popularly known as hemp or wiwi, which weighed 1 ton 659 kilograms. On chair explained that the driver of the J5 vehicle carrying the illicit drug took to his heel on sighting the officers of the agency. While maintaining that the cannabis sativa seized by the agency is worth 13 million naira, the NDLEA state commander said the command will not relent in ensuring that all drug-related cases are prosecuted to the latter. He pointed out that Aside the seizure of the cannabis sativa in Akonga, the agency also made significant arrest of suspects and cannabis sativa worth over 1,500 kilograms in Lafia, the state capital. In the history of the agency in Nasara State, is coming on the heels of two similar massive drug seizures recorded in the month of July. Be reminded that on Wednesday, July 6th, a total of 367.6 kilograms of the same cannabis were seized around the Emir's Palace here in Lafia and two suspects arrested. On the 9th, about three days later on, a whooping one ton and 29.5 kilograms of hemp were seized around the 500 housing unit on Doma Road, Lafia, concealed in a truck for conveying natural gas. The vehicle originated its journey from Edo State, made a stopover in Lokoja to offload part of his cargo before it headed here. The commander also reiterated that the command is ever ready to rate the state of drug-related businesses as he commended the resilience of the officers and men of the agency in checkmating the activities of drug dealers and users. The suspect, Mohammed Adamu, who admitted committing the offense, Pleaded for mercy and promised to turn a new leaf. Hey, I'm coming in. Baby, I took him out and I go tower. Daga ojeri, thank you much. He advised drivers who are in the habit of transporting hard drugs to desist from such acts. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has encouraged state governments to key into the Open Government Partnership Initiative, OGP to enhance transparency and accountability in governance. He stated this during the second quarterly meeting of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Secretaries to the Government held at the Unity Hall, Government House, Asaba, Delta State. The report. It is the second quarterly meeting of Secretary to Government of the Federation and Secretaries to State Government with a theme democratic governance and sustainable development in Nigeria. Boss Mustafa said the federal government is collaborating with the OGP initiative to improve accountability and transparency of government procurement process through the implementation of open contracting and public participation in the public contracting process. We are all aware of the economic challenges presently in our nation and globally. Nevertheless, governments both at the federal and state levels have through a number of policies and interventions been working to promote inclusive economic growth, empowerment and business opportunity for the citizens. Governor Ifanyo Okowa, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Patrick Oka, commended the federal government for continuous engagement through this forum, stressing the need to identify opportunities in key sectors of the economy in order to achieve sustainable development goals. Indeed, democratic governance is paramount for the attainment of sustainable development, and we must not lose sight of this focus. Therefore, we must uphold our democratic norms 
deliberate deployment of political will and administrative expertise. Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Joseph Ari, in his presentation, highlighted ways the federal government can improve on implementing its policies and programs in the areas of job creation and youth empowerment. Low economic growth, social political instability, youth restiveness of prostitution, banditry, armed robbery, etc., etc. Next. So to address these setbacks, the acquisition of technical and vocational skills with entrepreneurship often serves as a panacea to unemployment problems. The quarterly meeting strive to build the required synergy between the federal and state government to improve relationship between them. That story from Asaba Delta State. Policemen have rescued a prominent businesswoman in Oshu State, popularly known as Eru Arike. The woman was kidnapped at Olorunda village while on a visit to her mother. The men of the anti-kidnapping squad of the Oshu State Police Command engaged the kidnappers in gun duel and arrested three, while others escaped. Police Public Relations Officer Oshu Command Yemisi Opalola confirmed the incident and assured that the suspect would be arraigned in court after investigation. Speaking after she was rescued, the businesswoman expressed gratitude to the police and appealed to the state government and the police to ensure proper investigation and prosecution of their suspects. They were in the bush. Few minutes after I entered the house, two men came in. They covered their faces. They took me into the bush. I was shouting for help. Policemen came on time. The man that carried me kept running into the bush. One of the policemen shot him on his leg. Then he dropped me. The policemen arrested some of them. I plead with the police and government to ensure proper investigation and prosecution of this case. You're watching News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up after the break, how graduates turns shoemaker. Stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story. If you're just joining us, this is News R on Trust TV, a recap of our top stories. Governor Wiki denies suit against Atiku, PDP, and others. And uh, National Crisis Management Doctrine has been launched as response to rising insecurity. Now to more news. Stakeholders have stressed the need for step-up campaigns to encourage nursing mothers to practice exclusive breastfeeding for effective growth of their child. 
They said breast milk provides the right amount of nutrients and is easily digested. The report. As a way of nurturing healthy children, devoid of early stage illness, mothers have been urged to practice exclusive breastfeeding for at least six months. According to experts, the vital nutrient from breast milk is important for the growth of a child. At a road sensitization awareness campaign in Port Harcourt, organized by the River State Ministry of Health in collaboration with the World Health Organization, also stressed that breastfeeding is of great value to mother's health. The state coordinator of WHO, Bosede Ezekwe, said exclusive breastfeeding for six months is a well-recognized childhood survival strategy aimed at reducing under five mortality rate. We are in, a, in an era where we are faced with a lot of challenges. There is food shortage, there, is, there are diseases that are emerging. And so we need to have our immunity boosted. And the best way to achieve that is to start a child early in life by breastfeeding that child exclusively so that the child gets the needed immunity to fight these diseases and also ensuring that the child is adequately immunized. My final message to mothers is to ensure exclusive breastfeeding for their babies from birth up to six months and for families to provide the necessary support for mothers and the society, whether workplace, whether worship centers, whether the marketplace, business areas, provide an enabling environment for mothers to comfortably breastfeed their babies so that we do not break the chain of building the immunity of the child. A nutritionist at the State Ministry of Health, Glory Ngokocha, spoke on the theme of this year's campaign, Set Up for Breastfeeding, Educate and Support, which is aimed at educating nursing mothers on the benefits of exclusive breastfeeding. Ngokocha advised nursing mothers to eat well and consume lots of water, while tasking fathers to encourage and support them. Uh, the theme is a uh, step of breastfeeding, educate and support. So this year's theme is to support, protect, and, uh, and also uh, uh, prevent uh, uh, people from giving out formulas to infant children. So breastfeeding is the only food, only food, natural food that is produced by God for the children zero to six months exclusively before complementary food is also, you know, uh, 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 initiated to the child, is given to the child. They advise mothers to continue breastfeeding as it creates bonding between mother and child, as well as prevents ailments such as breast and ovarian cancer. And yet another campaign, the 12th of August is set aside annually by the United Nations as the International Youth Day. The purpose of the day is to draw attention to a given set of cultural and legal issues concerning youth. Celebrating this set of citizens is expected to boost their confidence and their ability to attain their full potentials. The Federal Capital Territory believe that there is a lot government should do to enable them to contribute their quota to nation building. Kabir Lawal reports. International Youth Day is an awareness day designated by the United Nations. The message this year is that for the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs to be achieved, the world needs to leverage the full potential of all generations. In other words, solidarity across generations is key to sustainable development and no one should be left behind. To achieve this objective, governments must make the youths more productive and support them to do more for the country. As we speak, due to the condition of the, uh, the, the country at the moment, I know what happens in the mind of every youth these days is, is that later they get up from their bed, they start going out to hustle for what they want to eat. I think that comes first in their mind and basically, I have not even seen enough uh, advert or stuff like that, you know, putting on the wave to show that uh, such event is coming up. Some know and some don't know. Uh, why? is because most time, youths are not often carried along whenever the government wants to do anything. They don't carry us along, so some people don't even care. Some youths don't care about the day. I'm aware, I'm, I know about the day. I know today is International uh, Youth uh, uh, Day, but plenty of people don't know. One of the glaring dysfunctions that has impacted negatively on the youth is the lingering ASU strike. Government or federal government, they don't know, they don't know that youth exist. 
Understand? If the youth exist, at least anything that I put in the budget, they always put the youth forward because they said they are the leader of the tomorrow. And it is now, they are the leaders, we are not the... For the ASU strike, I will say it's a very painful thing. I feel pain every day because I know, as a matter of fact, it's one area that has shown how our government has failed woefully. Education is the foundation of development. And if you get it wrong from your educational level, I tell you, there's no way we can do better. And that's why we are facing what we are facing today. I see the youth is looking to government to provide the essential tools that will enable them to achieve their potential goals. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Apuja. And moving from the young to the old, Nigerian civil servants have been told to prepare and make plans towards retirement to help improve their livelihood after long service to the nation. Pension consultants give advice during an interaction with the federal civil servants in Bochi State. Adamu Imam has details. The resource person speaks on some challenges Nigerian workers face after retirement. They say the only way civil servants can achieve goals in life is to develop economic sources for their well-being after retirement while in active service. And there are those that started work before 2004. And, and those that started work before 2004 is what we call um, accrued right or the bone, which is kept by the CBN at the central bank. At the point of your retirement, when you are about one year to retirement, you are supposed to do a verification from your ministry or department or agency, which will now qualify that uh, bone into your account. It will be transferred to your account. The process of uh, transfer, that is why we have so many delays, because the normally, federal government normally do it in batches. It's for them to always uh, try as much as possible to update their records, basically, especially the issue of uh, the nest of king. Because we have been having a lot of challenge, and that is uh, been something that has been trending in the pension industry. Because you see a situation about where someone will retire, and then somebody will be coming, two people will come in. So there are clashes here and there, and you begin to wonder, what do you deal with? But as it is now, thank God that for the pension industry, they said that uh, we only accept one nest of kin, and that one nest of kin is the one that we are going to deal with. If at all there is going to be like. Uh, uh, controversies. What we do that we call both parties all together so that they can be part of it, members of the family, so they can be they can be in the picture of what we intend to pay the price, the beneficiary, or whoever the deceased. A representative of the civil servant in the state, Mohammed Bello, says the journey is not easy, advising his colleagues to maintain cordial relations to achieve success. Because you are giving something out of you that will help others so you have to be dedicated you have to be trustworthy and you have to be uh, you have to be in fact uh, very good to anyone because you are a civil servant you are serving the people so you must be not biased Others who speaks at the interactive gathering charge Nigerian workers to continue to relate with one another to develop the country as a whole. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. With a high unemployment rate in the country, youths are often advised to learn skills that will enable them to be self-reliant rather than relying on government. Daniel Isaac, a young graduate, is one of those that took the advice by learning shoemaking during his national youth service. But with a high inflation and unfavorable business environment, his hopes of growing a viable business is fading. Take a look. Daniel Isaac is a graduate of microbiology from the University of Meduguri. He ventured into shoemaking after his National Youth Service four years ago, and this is where he resumes for work every morning. 2018-2019, I did my youth service in Opaibo, and it was through that year that I learned the shoemaking. And uh, my uncle here in Abuja rented this place for me. He gave me this place to start with. So I started uh, the shoemaking with the money I got from my youth service. But like many entrepreneurs in Nigeria, Daniel is struggling to remain in business amidst the energy crisis and poor infrastructure. 
But that's not the only problem. I think last two weeks I produced some Hermes shoes for someone. Like I produced them and I stamped my name on the Hermes. And the person say he's not no, he won't collect the shoe because it's not Hermes. So but I'm the one that produced it. But he insisted that I have to go and stamp Hermes on the shoe. He even took me to where they will stamp the the, the, the stamp on the shoe. According to a report by Chamonix International in 2014, Nigerians import at least 20 million pairs of shoes annually, costing the country hundreds of millions in dollars. With the new exchange rates, Nigerians now pay triple of what they would have paid seven years ago. When I went to Lagos to buy my leathers for, for production at first, I bought some leathers at 100 naira, 150 per square feet. But now it's, it's 500 naira, 600, 700 naira per square feet. Daniel is weighing the option of venturing into other businesses as growing his shoe business continues to become more challenging. I was thinking of starting up something. Like I, I wanted even selling everything. Though I didn't want it to clear the, the dream. But I needed something that can be able to fund the dream. So if we can have stores that will permit us to produce shoes in our own brand. This is one of Revenue in the footwear industry in Nigeria oh, is projected to reach 454,000 US dollars in 2022. So but a huge chunk of that amount goes to China, while entrepreneurs like Daniel are on the verge of going out of business. Ayubailia, Trust TV News, Abuja. Traditionalists from different parts of the world on Friday converged on Oshobu, Oshun State Capital, for the annual Osho Oshobu International Festival. The worshippers trooped to Osho Oshobu Shrine to perform rites and offer prayer while tourists explored the sacred Oshun Grove. Trust TV's Hamido Yegbade brings the report. Tourists, devotees, and visitors attended the grand finale of the annual Oshun Oshobo International Festival. The week-long event was concluded with the traditional rites performed at the Oshun Shrine on Friday, witnessed by a large crowd. People were seen making prayer requests at the shrine as they offered sacrifices and fetched water from Oshun River for healing. The Director General, National Commission for Museums and Monuments, Professor Isa Tijani Abba, who was represented by the Director in charge of Heritage Monuments and Sites, Victoria Oswago, encouraged Nigerians to cherish and keep their culture. The Nigeria has always encouraged the people to keep their tradition. And we also involved in the series of activities. We carry out restoration of some sculptures in the groove. Even correctly, we did the regressing of the first palace, which is a very key feature in the celebration, because that is where the king must sit to pronounce blessings on his citizens. A Yoruba teacher in Brazil, Adesomi, who brought his students to Oshobo from Brazil to witness the festival, said he was glad they were happy with what they saw at the festival. One of the Brazilians who attended the festival said his Yoruba name is Adeoshun and that he loves Yoruba culture and tradition. We came here to take part of the Oshun festival because for us it is very important to take part of the Yoruba nation about the Oshun 
festival. Our House in Brazil, the longest tour show. Recebe a Eleonie Chá em Brasil. The state governor, Adegboye Gao Yetola, who was represented by the secretary to the state government, Prince Wale Oyebamiji, said his administration was committed to promoting Oshun Oshogo International Festival and making sure that the celebration was done peaceful. Amido Yegbadu's report from Oshogo presented from the studio. This is Trust News Hours. We'll be back. Welcome back. President Muhammadu Buhari says his administration will continue to support entrepreneurs and the business community whose investments align with the priorities of the government in value and job creation. The president spoke on Friday at State House Abuja when he received the management of Bua Group led by the chairman Abdul Samad Rabiu. Buhari urged investors to take advantage of government's focus on import substitution to encourage local production and export. He said the policy had stimulated industrial stability, noting that the huge growth experienced by conglomerates like Boer Group was evidence of the correctness of the government's vision. In his remarks, chairman of the Boer Group, Rabiu, said the president's administration had created an enabling environment for businesses across Nigeria by ensuring industrialization and self-sufficiency. He said government had supported many industries to fully harness locally available resources and potentials. We to amaze, we import, we destroy the livelihoods of our local farmers while creating jobs abroad. It is because of this that seven years ago our government introduced numerous laws, executive orders and incentives that support businesses with import substitution projects. Our immediate goal then was job creation and economic security. Your Excellency, I must say that we have done so much and tried in creating an enabling environment for businesses across Nigeria, going by the, by the strides we and many others have made. The results can and will speak for themselves long after you have left office, Your Excellency. We know where we were in 2015, when you came in, and we know where we are today. These achievements have proven that Nigeria is indeed filled with opportunities, I want to there, we want to therefore identify with you, Your Excellency. But we know government alone cannot do it all. That is why we must, as private sector, come together to partner with you and support the development of our country. Goods worth millions of Naira have been confiscated in the past two months as smuggling is on the rise despite opportunities provided to operate legally at the GBR border. Abdullah Yamadi reports. Smugglers are choosing to go the wrong way despite reopening of GBR international border and policies that have been introduced to improve the ease of doing business. Stakeholders are also not cooperating with authorities by following legal avenues to import goods and services into the country. 
these smuggled goods have been seized by the Kazanastar Command of the Nigeria Customs Service. By allowing these smugglers, definitely there will never be a time when we will be able to achieve what we are expecting to achieve here. That's why we put the pressure on suppressing this menace, smuggling of rice and, and many other things, especially the food items, so that we will be able to produce ours in our country and be able to feed our nation. The command also intercepted some 450 bags of potash and 13 bags of tiger nut valued at over 2 million naira. Uh, now when we come to the revenue collection, we told this in the last time when the, uh, the presidency in their effort to ease the people's predicament, GBA border was among the four that were open. And almost this about three months ago, now I've started receiving the notice, collecting the revenue as well as promoting the export, both import and export activities. So the revenue in the period under review witness a decline simply because we have some inst but instant attacks by the bandits which put the security under job and stress position. To discourage smuggling. Vehicles used in conveying the contraband into the country will no longer be spared. They now brought the strategy of eliminating this particular vehicles on the exits along the customs. That's why today, if you look at the auction, they were auctioned out to the most of them, almost all, if not all, were auctioned to a million companies for what produce of other items for benefit to Nigerians. Authorities are determined to assist businessmen and women to operate within guidelines they underscore on the global best practices. But all forms of shortcuts in import and export of goods and services will not be tolerated. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. Now let's join Chamunda Beng for more on business. With the intention of generating $500 billion in additional revenue for Nigeria's economy, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, signed a contract extension with its partners for five significant oil blocks. NNPCL stated that the change is a significant step towards increasing Nigeria's crude production and unlocking investments in the Deep Water Space Post-Petroleum Industry Act enactment and its production sharing contracts. Contractors have resolved their disputes and signed renewed PSCS. The parties renewed their agreements in five oil mining leases during a signing ceremony conducted Friday in Abuja. An NPCL announced on its official Twitter account stating that this development is likely to release over $500 billion in revenue for the country. According to data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Nigeria's crude oil output fell by 2.3 million barrels in July 2022 compared to what the country produced the month before. According to OPEC's most recent monthly oil market report for August 2022, direct communication data on crude oil production showed that Nigeria's output decreased by an average of 74,000 barrels per day in July. This suggests that the nation lost around 2.3 million barrels of crude oil throughout the course of the month of July's 31 days. The organization added that during the month under examination, the average price of Brent crude, the world standard for oil, was $105.12 per barrel. Nigeria's oil revenues decreased by around $241.1 million or $101.13 billion naira in July of this year as a result of the loss of 2.3 million barrels. The chief executive officer of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises, Dr. Muda Yusuf, attributed the difficulties in the oil sector to high level of insecurity present throughout the nation. The actions of non-state players in the Apapa Port Corridor have been criticized by stakeholders in the maritime industry as undermining the efforts of the enlarged Presidential Port Standing Task Team, PSTT. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, NSC, Emmanuel Jimmer, stressed the necessity for the nation to maintain port efficiency in the face of demand for increased income generation at a meeting with important industry stakeholders. 
Jimmy emphasized that the gathering offers a forum for all pertinent stakeholders to voice their thoughts on how to improve the port. He urged PSTT and other pertinent industry stakeholders to embrace initiatives that would increase productivity in line with the ease of doing business requirements set by the federal government. That's all for Business News. I am Shamun Dabing. And to foreign news now, Germany has suspended most of its operations in Mali after the local military-led government denied flyover rights to a United Nations peacekeeping mission. The Malian government has once again refused to give flyover rights to a flight planned for today for the rotation of personnel. A spokesman for the German Defense Ministry said, at a regular news conference on Friday. In response, Germany had decided to suspend until further notice the operations of reconnaissance forces and CH-53 transport flights. Government spokesman Stefan Eberstreit said Germany was prepared in principle to participate in the activities. Now to sports. Tyson Fury has finally decided to walk away from boxing after confirming he's staying retired. The undefeated WBC heavyweight champion, 34, said he was retiring after beating Dillian White in April. But on Tuesday, he urged fellow Briton Derek Chisora to accept his offer of a trilogy bout, while in July he said he would fight Anthony Joshua if certain conditions were met. In another tweet, he added, see you all on the other side, 2008, 2022. Since Fury beat White in April, there has been a host of suggestions about what the champion could do next. Manchester City's Kevin De Bruyne and Real Madrid's duo Karim Benzema and Tubal Kotwa have been shortlisted for the Men's UEFA Player of the Year Award. The winner will be announced on 25 August. Goalkeeper Kotua and Benzema won the Champions League with a striker named 2021-22 UEFA Champions League Player of the Season. Kotua was player of the match in the Champions League final. Midfielder De Bruyne won the 20. 2021-22 Premier League Player of the Season. The top three nominees were chosen from an original list of 15 players, which included Paris Saint-Germain's Kylian Mbappe, Roma's Lorenzo Pellegrini, Bayern Munich's Sadio Mane, and Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk, Mohamed Salah, Trent Alexander, Arnold, and Fabinho. UEFA also revealed the shortlist for the Men's Manager of the Year Award with Real's Carlo Ancelotti, City's Pep Guardiola, and Liverpool's Jurgen Klopp, named the Women's Player of the Year and the Manager of the Year nominees will be named at a later date. All the winners will be announced at the Champions League group. Britain's Jack Draper and Dan Evans have made it through to the Canadian Open quarterfinals. Draper 20 led Gael Monfield's 6-0-0-2 in their last 16 match when the Frenchman had to withdraw with a suspected ankle injury in Montreal. Evans defeated American 10th seed Taylor Freeze. British number one Norrie lost 6-3, 6-4 to home favorite and sixth seed Felix Oga Alia Sime. Wimbledon finalist Nick Krigos is also through to the last eight after defeating fellow Australian Alex Deminua 6 2 6 3. And lastly, well, that's all the uh, sports story. We will now join Adeniji Ajishafe. For more. 
National Sports Festival Gymnastic Gold and Silver Medalist Avani Guel became national champion, winning five gold medals in her age category at the just concluded National Club Association Super Championship in Bini Edo State. Avani won gold in floor gymnastics, vault, beam, and aerobic gymnastics, and best all round to emerge national champion. In 2019, she competed first time in national event at National Youth Games at age nine, winning two medals. At 2021 National Youth Games, she bagged three gold medals out of five available and became the highest gold medalist in female gymnastics. At Edo National Sports Festival, Guel won team gold and silver individual medal competing in all elite gymnastics. Gymnastics competition. Abani Guel hopes to become world champion and win gold at the Olympics. And in football, Nigeria's Falconets keeper Tosin Dimei has expressed her excitement following Falconets' 1 0 win in their opening game in Group C game at the ongoing FIFA Women's Under 20 World Cup tournament in Costa Rica. Falconets, in the early hours of Friday, proved the bookmakers wrong by beating European champion France 1 0. Flores Sebastian scored the long goal of the game in the 85th minute in the keenly contested match play at San Jose Stadium. The man believes taking each game as it comes will help the team as Nigeria faces Korea Republic on Sunday in second group C match. That's sport news. I am Adeni Ajishafe. And with that, we've come to the end of News R on Trust TV. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Tiron Difade. Have a nice weekend.